Hi, welcome to Talk About here on Shaw TV North Island again. Uh, we have another interesting show. The guest is Ruth McMonagall. Ruth, thanks for coming in. Hi, John. Thank you for having me. I suspect a lot of people watching know who you are, but uh, some may not. Uh, you're very active in arts and culture, uh, but tell us about uh, how long have you been in Campbell River? We came here in 1981, mm -hmm. and uh, my primary drive for at that time was raising my young kids, supporting my husband, and... Uh, uh, Trevor's a teacher? He, he was, was a teacher. Yeah. He's now uh, retired to a different life. And uh, uh, there's not much else to know. Well, you opened Stillwater Books. When did you do that? Stillwater Books and Art uh, was opened in the early uh, tw 21st century, and uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful run at that. Yeah. Uh, three three plus years and uh, met thousands of wonderful people yeah. and it was just the most fulfilling work we've ever done we could talk about books yeah. and art which yeah. we both loved yeah. and uh, uh, it was a financial success yeah. but the time came to uh, move on from that there was a rental issue I think or a lease or something well our lease was up and we didn't yeah. want to commit for five years. Yeah. And we had some ideas about where we could go using Stillwater Books and Art as a base. Yeah. So Trevor has moved on into copy editing oh, and yeah. started a new business with copy editing. Yeah. Uh, we still sell books around town at festivals and well, that sort of thing. And you go online, I think. Yep. Yeah. And then also, uh, I have a great interest in art. Yeah. And so I'm moving on as an artist, uh, yeah. artist representative. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, you didn't mention Words on the Water, but you did that for, what, 12 or 13 years? Uh, it's actually 15 years altogether. F 15 years? It was, uh, we were in Seashelt at their festival, uh -huh. and Trevor looked around and he said, oh, you know, it took us eight hours to get here, all these ferries, gee, I wish we could do one in Campbell River. And so I said, well, let's. And he said, oh, can you imagine the amount of work? Yeah. So then we started talking to people, and, and a year later we established our committee, once we thought through the potential, yeah. Yeah. talked to people. You know, it's always good to get advice from other people established the committee and that following year uh, began our first festival and uh, thanks to everyone especially the yeah. you know people like Alistair and Neil who supported us and um, those are newspaper editors okay and uh, the wonderful committee who brought intelligence and drive and commitment and believing yeah. Yeah. and uh, so actually it was our 14th festival this year yeah but I wanted to get to that the first okay. one you didn't do and how did it go the first one we did was at no, the time. No, the first one you didn't do. Well, what this one. Yeah, how did this year go? Oh, it was wonderful. Paul and Angel Murphy are heading up the committee now. And um, they're wonderful, wonderful people. And so are all the rest of the committee members. But these, many of the members were Trevor's students. Huh? Are gone away, gotten lots of education, are leaders in uh, hotel management, in accounting, in education themselves have come back to the community and are making a really huge, significant contribution. Yeah. You know they have all these generalizations about people of various ages, and um, I think people like um, the, the, that couple and some of the other people who are on there, Rebecca Ber yeah. Berry and those sorts yeah. of people, uh, they, they break the mold. Yeah, They're it was sold out, models. I gather, eh? 100%. Yeah, which is something. You know, um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this show was that, you know, Campbell River has a reputation as the fishing, salmon fishing capital <laughs> of the world. Yes, it does. And it, it, its history is heavy into logging and other, you know, resources. And yet you look around, you know, Courtney has the reputation as the arts town, but Campbell River per capita, I think probably has more arts and culture. I that, would believe that to be yeah. true. And so why? Um, well, I'll. I think there are lots of reasons why Campbell River is a wonderful arts community. Of course, the natural world around us is important, yeah. but I think there are other things too. I think that we've um, attracted a lot of people who've come f to Campbell River with arts background, arts interest, and they've found groups here. Yeah. There's a lot of people in the arts, yeah. huge. Do you think Haig Brown was kind of a beginner or were there people before him? Uh, Haig Brown is our most famous writer. Yeah. And he and his wife, through their education and their legal and various other community things, did help stimulate the growth of um, a yeah. thoughtful art. Can I read a definition of culture? <laughs> you got to be quick. <laughs> and you'll see, okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, the first definition is the cultivation or development of the mind. Mm. Oh, refinement of mind and artistic intellectual development. Of course, that's a Hay Brown heritage, right? The artistic and intellectual side of self of um, civilization now some people think culture is like the just 
what a group is? Well, everything has culture. Whether or not it's high, I think, is the issue. Well, here, here we got a neat definition, okay? It is a society or a group, a culture is a society or group characterized by its distinctive customs. We could talk uh, salmon fishing or, or yeah. forestry, but also its achievements, its products, and its outlook. Yeah. So it all works together. And I think yeah. Ico, Ico, who is our maybe up and coming artist of the of the what the, this decade for sure. Yeah. Okay. Is that a one name person? Ico Jones. Oh, okay. Okay. He's a great photographer. He does commercial art. He also uh, does art art, and he's about to publish a book. Uh -huh. um, he's well known, and he's got some of Bateman's skills. So I think he's going to be the Robert Bateman. He's got the yeah. literal representative yeah. nature with symbolism, relates to the ecology of the area. Wow, yeah. okay, and he's uh, yeah. very sophisticated. And, and he's one of your clients in the new art representation business? No, I'm pushing him because oh. I believe in him. Okay. He's but already got an art agent down island. Oh. So, but what I believe is that if one person community does well, we all do, particularly yeah. in the arts. Yeah. Who are your clients now? Uh, Ken Blackburn. Yeah, Ken Blackburn of the Arts Council. That's right. And we've had him on the show several times. He's a great guest. Tremendous person. Yeah. Um, Jill Paris Rohde. Okay. Is she a painter? She is a painter. She started out in uh, at Cal Calico and Cross Stitch. For those of you who are new to Campbell River, that's not there anymore. As a decorative yeah. art painter, wrote a book, traveled all over the states to seminars, and then switched to her true love, which is fine arts. And I have a sample of her okay. current work here. Good. Uh, and Heather Hewson? Is that what and Heather yeah. Hewson. Now, Heather is a remarkable person. She is involved in the administration of the Campbell River Arts Council, and as such, she has a bird's eye view of what's going on. Yeah. But she also has this personal expression, which is fresh and very interesting. And uh, every time I see her work, I see new development. Yeah. So we've purchased one for our house. It's a oh, lovely nice. one we've brought, and I look at it every day, and she contributes to my sense of well-being. Yeah. You know, the sense of well-being is a good thing, and the Arts uh, Council uh, has a lot of programs well, maybe not a lot, but they've got programs that are bringing uh, young people and especially kids in challenged people yeah. uh, and uh, behaving in an artistic way seems to improve the personality overall. Oh, I think so. And the other thing about the arts is one of its great benefits is it teaches people to be relational and to be participatory in their culture and in their lives. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, feeds well a sense of well-being. Yeah. And that's super. And so culture in our community means caring. Yeah. As you probably know, that's one oh. of the characteristics. Yeah. This uh, is the so best so community so in the world for caring. Your time. I was watching the hockey last night as we were taping, and it was Canucks for Kids Night. And Trevor Linden said what it means to be, seer, uh, to be a BCer is caring for each other. And, you know, that's a hockey guy. But uh, uh, I think it's bang that. on. Oh, bang on for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's yes. great. Anyway, this is a great segue to a new event you've got, well, it's, what, River City Arts Fest. It's its third year now? I believe it'll be our fourth year. Fourth year. Uh, we've just now become a society, uh -huh. but up to that point it was primarily spearheaded by Impressions and Chris at Impressions. And um, I'll just show you how marvelous it is. We um, commission a local artist and pay them, which is what artists need to do, which is make a living, and uh, use them on our poster. This is an older poster, but the date, is the sponsoring the, this groups. This year is July 25. It is, yes. And we're hoping to, yeah. um, well, last year I think we had around 140 exhibitors. Yeah. And this year we're hoping to have an enhanced program, including a wine and cheese in the evening. Lovely. Uh, a professionally um, judged group of uh, works will be part of the wine and oh, cheese really? evening. And the arts is for sale? All art is always, almost <laughs> always for sale. <laughs> Even million-dollar sure. collectors, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So sure. um, you'll see a lot coming up in the next little while, perhaps okay. online with GoCampbellRiver.com okay. or, or through the newspapers or through posters. Yeah. So come on out. Save a few pennies for a few starving artists. Yeah, yeah. Now, getting back to Campbell River as a culture community, uh, uh, it wasn't long ago I, I went to the River City Players Theater for the first time, and that's where you had Ken uh, Blackburn unveil his new showing. And I, we have some photos. I will maybe try and stitch them into the show. But uh, uh, 
that's an amazing facility. Now, the Tidemark is a big theater, at least for North Island. But uh, this River City Players Theater is very nice, too. So what's the history on that? Or are, are you involved in it to some way? Uh, only as a prof profoundly committed supporter. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happened was um, I, when I first met Linda von Zuben, who is one of its directors or the pr okay. president, um, she was telling me at the store, at my store, Stillwater Books and Art, about this opportunity to support local theater. And we are really, really appreciative of local theater. Yeah. So I uh, got to know her a little bit and said, yeah, we're going to get involved and that sort of thing. And then lo and behold, the, the, the facility they were renting at 1080 Hemlock was donated to them by the lady who owned it. So then they could take this fabulous warehouse style building and they could turn it into an intimate, uh, beautifully appointed private theater. Yeah. And it represents the work of the River City players. Yeah. Well, it, it's really uh, with the elevated seats, uh, well, it's fabulous. Uh, 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 but they've got good lighting and they got a little bar and uh, it's, yeah, I think it's wonderful. I think um, what I would say about that particular theater is that it's intimate. Yeah. Because having about 80 to 100 people in there, you are very close to the stage. In fact, you can sit about a foot away from it. Did you so say 180? Up 180 to 100. Yes, because I did the, <laughs> I did the crowd Sorry. count on Ken's event, and it was the Close people were s sitting in extra chairs, and it was over 100. Yeah, it's true, and yeah. that was a terrifically uh, supportive yeah. experience for Ken. I yeah. think he had a lot to give. I, I'd just like to talk about sort of a new way of doing art Certainly. in presentation. Um, you know, the old way was maybe a few wealthy people with their little drink tottering around looking important, being in a drama of their own while the artist's work was displayed. But I think that's gone by the boards. And I think that what we did or what Ken uh, was able to do, putting spoken word art yeah. and then the visual art and then participatory programming. The like interactive people, afterwards. Absolutely. Come right up on, yeah. talk, yeah. It, become involved in the meaning of the art. Yeah. So this is... Um, I hope it's going to be a standard. We also had music, so yeah. that was wonderful It was too. brilliant, really. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I guess it was maybe two years ago now. Uh, Ken did a show at the art gallery where it was a performance art kind of a thing. Terrific. And like he deliberately sort of stopped out without taking any comments from the art. <laughs> and maybe he was mad because I was taking photos in the gallery. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't doubt know. it. I asked him about it afterwards. Uh, but. Um, this time, like he made that as part of the the event. So when you walked in, there was a guy playing. Was it a fiddle or a violin? It was a violin. Violin. And, and he's actually um, also in busks downtown. Okay. And well, it was I, I just want to tell you about that because that's sure. part of art too. Um, he does that not because he's poverty stricken, but because he leads a small symphony with chill, with younger players. Oh. And the money that you throw in his pot goes to buying sheet music. Oh, nice. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking maybe our government should give education a little bit higher yeah. profile and support yeah. the arts in education, yeah. but there's a man who's doing something about yeah. it. Actually, that's a good opportunity to jump to the economic impacts of art, the role of art. Uh, you did some research about Nanaimo. I yeah, sure put did. Put your glasses on and read the fine print here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a Nanaimo Arts and Culture Economic Impact Study here. And um, there's a couple things that are absolutely wonderful. Nanaimo, of course, is not known as a high art town. But Any more than Campbell River has yeah. been up till right now, when yeah. we're really moving this ahead. This is our new golden age. This is, this is our renaissance of sorts, you know, our yeah. coming to bear. Okay. All we need is the economic backing, and we're going to yeah. go. But I Well, want that's the point. I'm going to jump in. But, sure. Um, if you invest it, it grows. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that for Nanaimo in 2012, the impact of the economic, the economic impact of uh, the arts was phenomenal. Ninety-four million dollars, okay, the equivalent to 55 million worth of contributions to the provincial GDP, 885 jobs created, seven million in tax revenue to all levels of government. So I think that what we see is that this is not just something that. Perhaps you dabble in when you retire down at the community center uh, or at the Sybil Andrews house. This is a dynamic sector. And yeah. can I just tell Absolutely. you what's in the sector? Yeah, we got 29 minutes to fill. Oh, 29 minutes. <laughs> We're halfway through. We're halfway through. <laughs> okay, I, I just think it, it's helpful if we understand what the arts and culture segment actually is in our culture. And it involves probably nine areas. 
and uh, one that you're involved in, which is radio and TV broadcasting. Uh, and I'm going to take a minute just to say thank you, John, for your contribution. Oh, thanks. I've been thanking everybody that comes on for their contribution. Uh, what I do is minor. It's fun. <laughs> it, it may be fun, but it's also part of us, and we yes. really appreciate it. Um, of course, there's arts instruction and education. Newspaper, periodical, book and directory publishers, and software publishers. Wow, that's a big field. Yeah. Okay, performing arts companies. And of course, we have the River City Players. We have Shoreline Musical. We have um, Ann Young's This Weekend Dinner Theater at... Yeah. And you probably have a note for it there. No. At oh, uh, the uh, Willow Point Hall, there's going to be um, Our Town by Thornton Wilder. If you haven't seen it, you're not yeah. an educated, uh, enlivened person. Excuse me, another jump in. Willow Point Hall is going to be the subject of a show coming up Ooh, I'll talk about. Terrific. That's a, yes, they've got some news. Okay. So there's all kinds of performing arts. Yeah going on in Campbell River. There's also Island Phoenix a cappella. Yes, isn't that fabulous? I don't know much about it. Um, it's a it's a school of art. We talked about, uh, I mentioned art instruction and education yeah. for young people. Um, Heather uh, Gordon is one of the directors of it. Oh. She has long roots in our community yeah. and uh, she had a ballet school. She's very theatrical. Yeah. She's totally competent in almost any field of yeah. artistic yeah. endeavor. Yeah. And uh, she has with her a musician, and then they teach the kids, or participants, I should say, yeah. uh, the skills involved yeah. in theatrical yeah. production. What's the correct pronunciation of, is it a cappella or a cappella? A cappella. A cappella, okay. A cappella means you not with instrument. No, okay, so that's singing that is not... Uh, without music. It, with, uh, without with an a, instrumental backup, yes, usually. Yes, pardon me. Okay, yes, that's okay. singing is music. Yeah. Well, yeah. I also want to mention a lot of choirs and music in our community. Yeah. You know, if you're at the Spirit Square, and you're down there, and Jim has yeah. brought wonderful people in. Jim yeah. is our uh, yeah. person who organizes. Jim Creighton. Absolutely. And But you see, we have River City uh, singers, too. Yeah. We have um, Island Voices. We have a fantastic yeah. children's choir. We have yeah. local groups doing drumming. Yeah. We have a high input of uh, a grassroots yeah. level of yeah. music in our community. And I'll do a shout out to the Music Plant Store. Uh, very good little, for, for a small town, you know, 35 thou, uh, that's a great store. And they also offer local music, which CDs of local musicians at the music plant. Yeah, yeah. And the Quinny. <laughs> <laughs> we hope it stays open and we're worried it won't. Well, you know, um, it's, a, it's an institution, is yeah. it not? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is an institution. Yeah, live music. Sure. Anyway, um, the economics of art, uh, this is an opportunity for me to do another editorial on uh, job creation. I've been pushing in various circles in a quiet way uh, the idea of not just high-tech job creation, you know, engineers, but we, the society, really needs low-tech jobs, low-skilled jobs for uh, jobs for a lot of people that just are falling out of the workforce. And as you were talking about the Nanaimo thing, it occurred to me, like, art is the same way. Now, I don't know if we want to go so far as to to give honorariums for artists just to be artists. But, you know, it might be interesting as a case study somewhere to do that and see, okay, uh, do it in uh, Campbell River but not Nanaimo and then compare the difference three years later. Well, I think that the goal for every community would be a living wage for their artists. Yeah. I don't know if that's feasible because we have really high-end artists, we have uh, yeah. local artists who are not substantially financially supported. Yeah. But there is something about uh, strong companies investing their wealth and their acquisition of uh, status in the community and also yeah. just their financial assets, bringing some of that back to the community in terms of supports yeah. in the art. That's what caused the Renaissance yeah. in Italy. Florence, okay. Italy and the, uh, was only possible because yeah. of uh, the... Yeah. You know, support of money. This isn't on my list of questions, but recently we saw art introduced into the hospital. Even though yes. the hospital is being torn down, they still put it in. And it's making a positive difference for not only the patients, but also the staff and the visitors. Now, I'm sure if you walk down a hallway 40 times a day after a while, you're going to get tired of that darn mule. <laughs> but still, it makes the point that, you know, if a, say, a successful mid-sized company was to invest in a bit of art and maybe if they got if you know we could create start starting to maybe tax credits for this kind of stuff That's a great but idea. Um, 
you know, getting more people feeling good about their own productivity, even if they don't make a lot of money out of it, uh, there's an awful lot here. We used to have a cameraman here who's got, yes. frankly, a unique mm -hmm. type of art. And... Uh, Computer-generated imagery. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Know him well, uh, he's good. Yeah. And uh, you know, my dad used to do art too. I've got his <laughs> stuff. And but, there, but it's, it's not it's a low really a broad area. Yeah, but it, um, just to talk about your low skill area, art is not necessarily a low skill. No. Um, in fact, it's a lifetime thing that oh, people absolutely. go through. Yeah. So it's a highly developed skill. Um, yeah. It may not at the moment register in a high level income, but it's not necessarily low yeah. skill. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take that <laughs> clarification. Uh, but it's a kind of thing that you can do without training. You can be self-taught. You can, um, but we're working really hard, and maybe down the road we'll, uh, there will be a private art school here. That's one of the ideas. And I'm not allowed to say too much about all these dreams and yes. hopes, but that's a possibility. But can I interject uh, about the, this? The new art magazine? The new art magazine. Yes, okay. Okay, so what we have here is the VI Vancouver Island Compass. This is a new art magazine that's coming out. Let's see. Yeah, oh, sure. Okay. All right, I'll pass oh, that on to you. Oh, it's got advertising in it? Yes. Oh, how can it be artistic if it's got ads in it? Uh, that's my point about the relationship between <laughs> economic well-being and artistic well-being. Huh. What we have here is a new art magazine that is coming out published, to be published here in Campbell River, and it's going to go the full length of the island. And I'll just give you a heads up about marketing strategy and why I think it will work. Yeah. Um, this is going to be sent to companies, oh, dentists, really? people who have uh, beautiful uh, magazines in their waiting rooms. We want something that promotes art yeah. in everybody's waiting room. Huh. We want people to pick it up and say, oh my goodness, look at here's a Jill Paris Rohde or, or huh. here's somebody else. Look at that. Did you see that? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And yeah. the same reason it's successful in hospitals, yeah. it will be successful in your business. Yeah. That's the line. Dan Toloski's art comes to mind. Very wonderful. Yeah. Very wonderful. Yeah. So um, the bi-monthly starting in April. Is it going to be out in April? Uh, Maybe she's May. She's done the interviews and the money's oh. coming. This is a way that Campbell River can support local oh. uh, artists. This uh, will feature artists, not just from Campbell River, but the first artist being featured will be from Campbell River. And um, buy a subscription. After three months or so, there'll be subscriptions available with limited uh, huh. signed edition prints. Wow. So th there's, 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 there's a vacuum that this will fill, yeah. and it's going to happen here. Yeah. So I, as but I that's was an saying, island magazine an published island in mag Campbell River. That'll be ex exciting. Brand yeah. new. Terrific idea. Yeah. So just watch. It'll be around after yeah. the three months subscriptions will be available. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is neat. Can I tell you something else that's exciting? Certainly. All right. I don't know if anybody knows or noticed, but when you got your... What's on Digest? That's right. There's can on the can front. Can on the cover. And on the inside, it's got something about words on the water. Yeah. My goodness. Kathy it Cardall and uh, Brian published this. Visual Arts Tour Map. Ah. So you don't know what to do on a Saturday. Here are all the places. See, there's yeah. a map right here. Huh. But you could just pop in and take a little look at art. That's like the garden tour in the summer. Yeah, it's, but it's going to be uh, all, all summer. Wow. And at the end, at the bottom, there will be what's on for that month wow. in the artistic community. This huh. is just the beginning, but we're hoping to promote art in a beautiful way. I don't know what... Um, <clears throat> the government is going to do in terms of promotion, but you know, little people can make a huge yeah. difference. Huge yeah. difference. Well, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. you sure got your finger on a lot of stuff. I'm just so thrilled to be here. Yeah. Part yeah. of it, you know? Yeah. Um, let's, uh, well, okay, five minutes. We'll get this in. The Courier Islander uh, yeah. is uh, got, as of we're recording, about 60 days left. What kind of an impact is its closure going to have? on the community in terms of arts and culture? Well, all I can say is that Neil has made it, that's the current editor. Yeah, Neil has, Cameron, who yeah. was on the show with his book. Has made a significant contribution to Campbell River, both personally and through his professional work. Yeah. And uh, really and truly, if it were not for the support of the newspapers, Words on the Water would not have gotten off the ground. Yeah. And um, I can say that with a deeply appreciative heart. Yeah. And also, um, he has encouraged 
the strength of Campbell River, which has been its salmon fishing publicity and yeah. people who relate well to the yeah. natural world because that, yeah. you know, not only just his book, yeah. his regular well, contribution. You know, Jeremy Maynard, the fishing columnist, yes. what a tremendous contribution he makes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we need to understand that these people are not, when the word goes out, it may be, it's from one yeah. uh, keyboard. Yeah to many, many minds yeah. and hearts. Yeah. And, and so they've been very significant. Yeah. I have no idea what it will mean ultimately, because yeah. that's, I'm not in yeah. the prophetic role. <laughs> but I do think that they, they've, they've yeah. done really well in contributing, yeah. and that's I was going to say that I won't miss Ray Griggs' climate ranting columns, but I didn't <laughs> say that, so. You didn't say that, <laughs> No, okay. I didn't say that. Okay. Um, so what more is needed? Well, I would really, um, think that people could take to heart two or three things from this discussion. Sure. And the first thing that they could take to heart was that there is a place in Campbell River for everyone to participate in the arts, whether it's um, drama, as you yeah. pointed out, or music. You know, yeah. whatever skill you've got, bring it to the fore. Yeah. You may be, the community will be richer for your contribution. Yeah. I think uh, the second thing we can do is really support our artists who are visible artists. That means getting out to that th dinner theater or yeah. picking up a paintbrush and going down and saying, oh, I love your work, here's my $300, you know? Yeah. Um, it, there are other ways to support too. They can volunteer at the Tidemark Theater. They can yeah. work in this new film yeah. industry that's coming up. You know, or there's order lots your to do. book through Coho Books, the last independent bookstore in town. Well, um, let's just say that books are, still have life. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> okay, we won't go there. <laughs> we won't go there. No, but uh, I made a list, uh, you know, since Stillwater closed. I thought, oh, well, that's the last bookstore in town. No, there's Coho. But there's also uh, Savon, Walmart, and Superstore all have book sections. And in particular, the museum has a very good collection of BC books, local books. And they do. Yeah. And you know where, um, one of the things that's a challenge for established uh, bookstores is that we also have the Rotary Book Sale. And we also have the museum books yes. that, that sell thousands and thousands yes, of books. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and also, I just want to mention the used bookstores, which is Mum's oh, Book of Bin. Yes, and Heidi, and, and uh, there's one in Willow Point called yes. Willow Point Books. Oh. And they do active businesses. Thank you for correcting my omission. Oh, no, no, I didn't no. mean to do I just meant no. to, to, to say yeah. books are still available in the big way here. Yeah. I don't know if we've got 30 seconds left, but is the carving, the Shoreline Arts carving? Yeah, it's is an that art form. Art? It's, it's beautiful art. Let's go for it. <laughs> it. It puts together our roots in the in the logging industry yeah. and artistic production. Yeah, yeah, taking logs with chainsaws and making beautiful pieces of, <laughs> of art. I think it's great. But you know, it's like, it's not traditional art. So people are like, eh. But oh. anyway, I'm hoping to have them on as a, as a guest too, so. So let me throw something nasty sure. in. So is graffiti, an art form. Huh. And we need to have room for our young artists in our community who express themselves artistically. We need to have a space for them. Well, we'll put up a wall, not in Campbellton, thank <laughs> you, and they can do it. Anyway. anyway, Ruth, thank you very much for coming in. It's thank been you fascinating. For we could probably go for another hour if we worked at it. But <laughs> so there, um, that's Talk About here on Shaw TV North Island. We thank you for viewing. If you want to view the show again, Shaw TV North Island has a YouTube channel and you can find it there. Also, my website, crnv.com, has a list of the shows that you can just click on. And the last two or three I haven't posted yet, but uh, they'll be there soon too. So uh, let us know. Uh, you can reach me, by the way, through that website as well. And uh, thank you, volunteers. Thank you, Shaw, for putting on Talk About here on Shaw TV.